1994 was the year Kenya's first vice president and later leader of the opposition party, the Kenya People's Union, Oginga Odinga, died. At the time of his death in January, Odinga was leader of the opposition in parliament and head of Ford Kenya. He was succeeded in both roles by Saboti MP Michael Kijana Wamalwa. This was against the wishes of Odinga's son, Raila, who felt that he was the rightful inheritor of the party's leadership. Indeed, there would emerge two factions within Ford Kenya, one led by Wamalwa, with the support of most Luya party members, and the other by Raila, with the support of most Luo members. In addition to the ethnic divide, there was the question of relations between Ford Kenya and the government of President Daniel Arab Moy. In the months before Odinga died, Moy had tried to woo him and the Luo community towards a rapprochement with the ruling party Kanu. Wamalwa was for continued dialogue with Moy, Raila and other young leaders in Ford Kenya, such as Paul Muite, were not. Other opposition parties would face similar unity problems as Ford Kenya. In Ford Asili, led by Mbiri MP Kenneth Matiba, many of the party's MPs, including Matiba's deputy, Butere MP Martin Shikuku, thought Matiba was running the party's affairs single-handedly. The effect of the disunity of the opposition parties was that Moy and Kanu continued to dominate parliamentary decisions. Indeed, that year, the main challenge to Moy's government did not come from the political opposition, but from major scandals in the business sector. In March, Nairobi businessman Kamlesh Patni of Goldenberg International was arrested by police investigating a suspected 13.5 billion Kenya shilling foreign exchange fraud. The fraud involved the irregular payments of billions of shillings by the Central Bank of Kenya to Goldenberg International in compensation for supposed export of gold from Kenya. Patni and several Central Bank officials, including former Deputy Governor Elifas Riungu, ended up in court on theft charges. The central bank would later advertise the sale of Patni's luxurious hotel in Nairobi, the Grand Regency, in an effort to recover 2.6 billion shillings it said it had lost to Goldenberg International in the gold export scam. The central bank had already lost billions of shillings in a similar scam by Trade Bank Limited, involving fake export documents. Interpol would later issue a warrant of arrest for the bank's owner Al Noor Qasam, who had run away to Canada. That year, the government parastatal National Social Security Fund NSSF, would face a suit of 2.5 billion shillings from Cyrus Jirongo's Sololo Outlets Limited for cancelling a contract to construct residential flats in Nairobi South Sea. On the conservation front, 1994 was the year Moy replaced Richard Leakey with David Weston as director of Kenya Wildlife Service after Leakey had disagreed with Moy over the management of the KWS. In sports, the year saw William Sigay break the 10,000 meters record and Paul Tergat win the World Cross Country Championship in Oslo. Tekla Lorupe won the New York Women's Marathon in her first marathon attempt. But it was also the year Olympic gold medalist boxer Robert Wangila Napunyi died during a bout in the US. He would be buried four months later in Nairobi after a protracted court battle between members of his family over his final resting place. Nineteen ninety four was also the year Kenyan said farewell to two hundred and seventy two people who died when a ferry at Mtongwe capsized in the worst disaster in Kenya's history. Former Vice President Josphat Karanja, former Speaker of Kenya's first Senate Timothy Mwinga Chokwe, former Migori MP and Cabinet Minister John Okwanyo. Former Kanu Strongman and Cabinet Minister Justice Ole Tipis. 
former Kirinyaga MP Nahashon Juno, former Butere MP John Okwara, posthumous winner of that year's Madhari constituency by-election Frederick Masinde, and veteran journalist Henry Reuter.